Ki ora, ko Tanisha toku ingoa, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Thematic analysis is a means of understanding what the patterns are in these diverse people's experiences. Thematic analysis has been applied to help us understand the experiences and perceptions of healthcare professionals, patients and their families and friends, and informal carers. We have such diversity in any given setting that it can be really difficult to find these common threads in people's experiences. Thematic analysis is really concerned with understanding those patterns, what are those common threads, and what sits behind people's perceptions, understandings and behaviours. We are looking for themes that connect to each other and that connect people and people's experience and perceptions to each other. What are, the, what are the common threads that we share? That's what we're looking for in a thematic analysis. So it really helps us to get a firm understanding of why people do things, why they say things, why they think things. For this presentation, I'm going to focus our attention on what we actually do when we are analysing data thematically or applying a thematic analysis. So let's assume that you have already obtained your ethics approval from your local governing ethics research committee and in order to gain that approval you've also thought through quite carefully what your research question is, what is it that you want to know and what will be the methods that you will use to find out that answer. Now, in qualitative research, we would often use uh, interviews or focus groups to, to find this out, right, to get people to answer this research question. And we will do it by asking them a series of related questions to really try and hone down on what is it. And so I'm going to assume that you've already done that hard work. You've already figured out what is my research question. And then you've gone out and, and interviewed some people. Maybe you've interviewed 20 perioperative anesthesia specialists. And you really wanted to find out why they are, what they think about a particular topic. And you've asked them these questions. You've used your dictaphone or, your, or some kind of a camera device to audio record their interview and then that audio recording has been transcribed and now you're sitting with a pile of scripts. You're sitting there looking at all these transcripts thinking, what do I do now? That's the point that this presentation is going to focus on, that what do we do now bit. Um, because it can be quite daunting and a bit of a tricky tricky space to navigate but fortunately we've got some amazing leaders in qualitative research who have really honed in for us on what we do and I, I particularly like uh, Braun and Clark uh, their six phase approach to analysing data thematically. The first step is familiarisation of the researcher with the data means that the researcher sits down with the transcripts and gives them a close read through and notes down some initial ideas on what those common threads are that they're seeing. So in an interview the person might 
return to the same topic a few times over and this is the kind of thing that the researcher would take note of that for this person um, one of the key areas of interest um, or key issues that they are concerned with is dot dot dot. The second phase is generating initial codes. Now a code simply means that you assign some sort of a shorthand um, word or a couple of words uh, to various aspects of the data so that you can easily retrieve those bits of the data. The designation might be a word or a simple phrase that summarises or captures the essence of what is said, written or observed. Now coding makes it easier to summarise and compare, which is important because qualitative research is primarily synthesis and comparison work. You know, it's um, what are these similarities, what are the differences in people's experiences and opinions um, that they have presented in their response to the interview question. As the researcher reads through data, they assign codes. Right, so that a code is something that you create. As the researcher, you are looking for those common threads, those common themes of what sort of stuff people keep going on about, and you assign a code, you a word to summarise that issue, or maybe it's two words. Um, it's not usually, you know, long sentences. It's just we just want a code. We just want something to symbolise all that other stuff that it's about. So you would create a coding scheme. Now this is an iterative process which means that when you read the first transcript you might create three or four or ten codes about what the main issues are that you're seeing that this person is talking about. The second transcript you might notice that actually I need some more new codes because this person is talking about slightly different things as well as those initial codes from transcript one. So I add in three or four new codes and then with transcript three I'm adding in some more codes again. And eventually you get to a point where you're reading through these transcripts and no new codes are emerging and you realize okay I've got a good robust coding scheme now that is capturing generally all the same sorts of stuff that is coming up across these different interviews. You're coding interesting aspects of the data systematically across the data set and you're collating the data relevant to each code. There are coding software programs that can make your coding task a bit easier or less time intensive. They include QSR and Vivo, Atlas, um, there are various other ones that can help you to basically highlight text in a digital transcript and then assign it to a code and drop and drag. You're dropping and dragging across the screen to, to assign codes to your text. And this means that later when you, you can do a search function and search for a particular code that will bring up all of the transcript data that you have coded to that code. So you can see everything that all of the participants in the study have said, had to say about a particular topic, a particular code. Phase three is searching for themes. This involves collating the codes into possible themes collecting all data relevant to each possible theme. Some codes work in concert together and you might realise that it actually they are all about essentially the same thing. These, these different codes all work in concert to come together and then you can look at all the data that has been coded to those codes and that will essentially tell you what your participants have to say about the theme. Phase four is reviewing themes. This is where you check if the themes sort of fit in relation to the coded concepts 
yeah, you're checking if the themes fit in relation to the whole data set. And I think what is most important here is that you're always checking back about your research question. Are these themes helping me to understand the answer to my research question? Or have I gotten off track and have I gotten lost in the data? <laughs> always bring yourself back to the research question. You review your data again to search for any additional themes and this is where you might workshop it with other members of your research team and, and say we think these are the emerging themes, this is how they kind of hang together, this one's connected to this one, one connected to this one and the big theme and then there might be some sub-themes. But you're working out what are these connections to, to get a general story, a general picture or a map of what the themes are and how they connect with one another. It's time to write up your findings. So how do you do that? Here's an example from a paper that uh, some colleagues and I worked on. Here's a theme, culture. Now first thing we do is explain what is this theme about. Then we bring in some quotes direct quotes and after the quote you would usually put directly after a quote you would put in brackets um, which participant said that. Now in this case um, the reason that we do that is because we want to be able to show that this came from a person that this is about real people but also uh, not about numbers um, it's about people. So often you'll find pseudonyms applied here. It might be, you know, Mary Ann, the manager. This gives us a little bit further information though. In this particular example, we're saying we want to be able to show diversity across our settings. Here we've, we're showing a bit more diversity again. This was a different setting and this time it came from an anaesthetist. But they're both speaking in to the same theme. And that's important because we want to be able to show diversity across um, the data set to show that this, there's this saturation of this theme. Here you can see it again. We've got a surgeon, a nurse, a manager, and they're from different settings, different sites. And again, this is so that we can demonstrate that saturation across across the data set. It's important that all of the quotes don't come from a single participant. Even though they might be really eloquent, we, we just got to choose the best gold that comes from that particular person and use it strategically. And we need to include the voices of others. Another way that you can quickly show saturation across the theme is, is to be able to say that people used words like dot dot dot. So you might use that some of the time, but then you also want to be able to use this where you get a, a nice solid quote, a nice solid sentence that someone has said and be able to really hone in on that. Here's another paper I contributed to where we used a thematic analysis, key concepts. And we had seven themes that emerged there. So the beginning of my findings section would state what those are. And then here you can see, you just follow the yellow brick road. So our first one was around staffing and staff interactions. So that's the first theme that we then describe. What was it about? And what do people say? And then you have a discussion section and write what these key themes mean, how we can make some sense out of them in terms of uh, it might be policy options, it might be public health options, training options, world of the future research directions and that kind of stuff. 
Okay, well, that's all from me. And I wish you all the best in your thematic, analytical endeavours. <laughs>